Oh, let's see here. Get this camera right. Hopefully. Hello, hello. Let me do some processing on some 450. This stuff has been once fired. Start her off resizing. Deep camping. Kind of a creature of half. I like to put them right from the sizer decap or die right into the tumbler. Throw them right into the tumbler. Clean that stuff all up, get them ready. Yep. Put them on the floor. Put a lot of rounds through up. I'll tell you what, folks, I hate dropping them things on the floor. <laughs> the son of a gun is like stepping on a small rock. I have 48 of these to run through. Size them, decap them, tumble them, and after that's done, then I'll probably, I'll probably just run them through the tumbler for about an hour or two, clean them up real good. They're not in bad shape anyway. Run them through anyway. This is one for you, Ozark. And 450. So calm. Of yours takes the same bullet that monster does. That's a lot longer. All 458 to 460 diameter bullets. I think I mentioned I got 48 of these. I think I put two of them into a, a test lot the other day when I was running some through. Yeah, she's a baddie. She's a big one. 50 Marlin. That's the 4570 on steroids. I got a custom shot. 28 inch barrel from uh, the TC custom shop with a brake. I got a brake on that one. Oh boy, it's been a nice afternoon, cloudy but foggy, been a lot of rain last night, we lost a good two thirds to three quarters of the snow that we had out here, and uh, see a lot of the grass out here in the field out here, I get to set up a target out back, so I get to shoot at it's probably about a about a hundred yard range right out straight out back shoot across my pond out back there 
And it's about just about a hundred yards. So shoot right from right from the well the window here in the cellar. So makes it nice. I don't even have to go outside. It's supposed to be supposed to be cold here the next few days, but clear. Forgive my boiler in the background here. I don't know if it's going to bother with the audio or not. Doesn't run long anyway. Other, then I've got a small plastic box that I got set aside for scrap brass. They'll go in there, these spent primers will go into another container for brass recycle. And it's the same way with this brass. Like any of the calibers that I load, then that's what happens. Well, if I have any of them screw up, get screwed up for one reason or another, you know, and things happen. And, uh, go in that box, and get a good bunch of it all, carry it down to the scrapyard and get a few bucks out of it. The primers are all fired. I used to keep a lot of the and shotgun primers too when I was reloading the shotgun. I haven't recouped that equipment yet. I had a nice Mac 650. I even made a couple of sets of dies for this rock chucker that was uh, uh, made for the rock chucker from our CBS. They made them in, uh, I think it was uh, 12. They definitely made 12 and 10 because I had both of those sets. And I think they made uh, 20 as well. This uh, this uh, uh, adapter that goes right here, uh, you take your die out and then take that adapter out and that die set screwed right down into it. So that was really nice. It, it, it worked out well. Boy, I'll tell you, I missed that. I loaded a lot of shotgun rounds with that thing. 10 gauge and 12 gauge. But they don't make them anymore, unfortunately. So I'm without a shotgun loader right now. I, I'm not shooting a lot of shotgun right now anyway. <laughs> I got something to say about that. Thompson Center Encore. They make a a couple of shotgun barrels for that as well, 20 gauge, and uh, one that I got is a 24 inch rifle, full rifle uh, barrel for that thing, and I didn't really think it was going to make all that much of a difference, so I took some uh, rifle slugs, put them sent them again through that thing, and I'll tell you, that thing will knock the heels off a set of high heels in a hurry. She'd smack you pretty good. Two and three quarter inch ounce. There were ounce weight slugs. And uh, accurate, very accurate. And double weight on it. Oh, that was a <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing that I've been mentioning about the, the TZ on for contender systems. They're so versatile. They cover everything from rifle to shotgun to muzzle loader. You get them with a lot of the different gauges. A lot of the ones that Smith & Wesson is making now are just standard calibers. But if uh, you guys are really interested in finding out about other calibers then let me know because I've got a lot of information that you guys can that you guys can work with to uh, find custom stuff.
And that is a little pricey, I will say that much. Those custom barrels will cost you. But they're well worth it. You get the full advantage of all the gases in that barrel and having a more consistent uh, pressure range. And I feel and, and have, have seen it many times about uh, having uh, a more consistent accuracy. Yeah, I got I got black rifles. I got bolt bolt action guns. I got semi-automatic pistols, like I showed you there the other night. And uh, I don't know. I I'm just <laughs> I'm just for the for the fun of single shot. I guess it's more to me. It's more challenging because you got when you look at it, you got one. That's it. So you better be on the, on the ball and on the mark with that one round. Because if you're not, <laughs> obviously you're going to miss it. And I haven't had any any trouble with uh, with either one of those systems. That's my prime of ketchup, by the way. I've been reloading since oh, probably the second or third week there that I moved into the place. I love it here. It's quiet. My nearest neighbor is straight across the road. I don't have to worry about bothering him because he's a truck driver and a, and a hunter too. Doesn't get out to him shoot much anymore, he told me. But, you know, if he was to, if he was to go over here and I want to toss a few rounds, and I got no trouble with that. His property's a lot bigger than mine over here. I've got six and a half acres. So, it's not bad. Nice little ranch house, ranch style house, single single level. I got a full basement down here. All by myself right now. Been trying to talk my dad into coming up stay in for a while and uh, get out of that place that he's been he's uh, he's a shooter too he likes to get out there and shoot he and I both uh, shot competition in in the uh, in the guard there when we was when we was in there he retired I didn't I should have stayed in but oh well <laughs> things happen now those are all processed up, up to that point anyway. I got them in there. All I got to do is start that thing. I'll run it for about an hour, an hour and a half, clean them up real good, get them ready. And I'll take them out of there and trim them up, clean the primer boxes and, and uh, prime them up. I'll leave them, I'll leave them right in the state that they'll, they'll be ready to drop a powder charge in and seat a bullet. I've also got some 4570s down here. Pretty good bag of those. And I've got two barrels for the contender for the 4570. I've got a pistol barrel for 16. That's going to break on it. And the other one is just a, a, a 23 inch. I bought them both second hand. And I don't know why people did what they did to that rifle barrel. But they took the muzzle brake off of it. I've got to get another one to to put onto that barrel, put it back on there. Kind of looks kind of funny with just that threaded in. I was thinking about a can, possibly, you know, but I just don't have the money for it right now. Things are pretty tight, so I'm just trying to get by. I'm catching up on my brass, prepping all that stuff, getting it ready to. Getting it ready to go. This is all new stuff here. Uh, Starline brass, 4570. All it has to do is just be checked on, on length, flared, and uh, and primed, and it, it'll be ready to, to load. And that's what I've been doing here lately is just catching up on brass. It's got to be processed. I've done some loading, not a whole lot. But some, and uh, I've got a bunch of test loads that I've got put up, 
And I suppose one of these days I got to get off my backside and get out there and set up a target and uh, fire a few of those how they're going to do. <laughs> and I do have a chronograph. I, I don't take it out on bad days. Today was pretty nasty. It's kind of drizzly, cloudy, foggy, kind of crappy. But I still took my air gun out and fired a few rounds through that. I got to put that on target. Different types of pellets, 177 caliber hollow points. And I've got some that uh, I believe I got them off, I think it was eBay, either eBay or, or Gunbroker, one of them. And different manufacturers from overseas. And uh, I think they'll do well. The uh, ones that's got a hollow base, skirt, lead, those sound basically like a uh, just a regular pellet gun, but it's, it's rolling it's about 1300 feet per second. But those ones that are plastic, it's got that metal insert. Boy, them things sounded like a 22 cracking down across that field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, Vanessa. That's, that's right. And I, I've, I've gotten into them. I've gotten into them. Uh, no, it's, it's fun. It's, uh, one of the ones that break in half. Takes pretty good, uh, pretty good arm to cock that thing and uh, pull that barrel down and uh, charge your air system. But she's pretty fast. That that last one, that last pellet that I tried earlier today, like I said, it sounded like a like a standard twenty two going across that field. <laughs> pretty good crack to it. All right, let's see. That's that's the rock chucker. I just built this bench, by the way. I got my scale there. And the tumblers in the background. And this is, uh, this is an eight foot, four foot wide, eight foot, uh, bench. This one is one of the older RCBSs. And I bought it strictly to use the APS system, which is the uh, auto, auto prime system. CBS and also if I have to pull a bullet or two because of something I screwed up on <laughs> and I'll, I'll pull the bullets you know that way I don't have to use a, a kinetic which I do have kinetic puller I always find that they make a mess that bullet releases and it goes down into the bottom of that thing and bounces when it does it throws that powder all over the place so I uh, I went to the collet type RCBS. All I got to do is screw this unit out of here and put that collet system right into this press, and I can use it to uh, to uh, pull a little further down the bench here. I roll down here. That's that's my big bench where I got the bullets and stuff. Uh, this is hopefully you can see this. That is an RCBS powered trim pro. And I didn't use it until I got moved into this place. And uh, I think it's a pretty slick unit. I think it works really well. Let me see if I can get that camera over here so I can show you a little better here. But uh, that works well. You gotta keep, uh, keep in mind one thing that uh, if you don't have that thing centered on there just right, and then cutters grab a hold of that brass, it'll it'll tear it up. It'll tear that thing right out of that uh, right out of the shell holder. And it'll bugger them son of a guns up. Oh, by the way, this is the other half of the uh, the uh, RCBS priming system. You take a flat of primers, take this plastic cover right off, and turn your primer package upside down, and pull the tray out, and it lays those primers right out. The little ridges in the bottom are for the primer flipper. So if you have them uh, upside down on the tray, as you shake that back and forth slowly, 
it'll flip them things back over. So you want them all anvil up when you go to go to use these things. Let me get that thing back in here. That'll seat 25, 25 primers a piece into these things. And you can buy the CCI primers that are already in these strips. They're reusable. As you can see, I got quite a few of them in that bag. So whatever you're doing for caliber, you get one size that's for large pistol. This happens to be for small pistol, small rifle, either one. This is primers of the same size on all the small pistol primers, and they're all the same size on the uh, on the large pistol. So it's just a matter of sliding them into that that charger and uh, priming them up 25 at a time, and you put them right into the side of that that APS system, one strip at a time, and just keep pulling the hammer and. Uh, that uh, primes up all the cases that you've got. Well, you got all these shell plates on the edge of the bench here. And I've got to find because those fit just like a like a shell holder, and they're supposed to slide down into that. And that's not the size. I should have brought my book downstairs. I'm not going to find that right now. I'll dig out the Bible. I'm a number 50. Right in the back, it's got all your... Tells you each, each company that makes them, what sizes they are, how you can cross back and forth. Different, uh, different calibers. 570 RCBS number 14. pins into those little holes. They're oblong holes. You slide those on. Oops. <laughs> Got it backwards. There we go. That drops down. Let's see if I can get that picture of that thing. There's the handle. You can see that shell holder and those two pins that I was mentioning. Yeah, it's a uh, little, little empty down here. <laughs> I, uh, like I mentioned before, I got the boiler going in the background, so that uh, that makes some noise. <laughs> and what I'll do is I'll take those cases. I got a. A expensive pair of calipers, <laughs> and uh, I forgot to get something out of that book. I got to get that trim length. Forty-five seventy. I got all this stuff written in the ledger, but it's upstairs because I'm transferring all the information from all these loading manuals into that ledger, and I've been working on that for two or three days. All right, trim two length, 2.095, 2.085, no, 95, 2.095 on the caliper. Let me take the caliper here, and we run that out to two, 
0.095. Set that to the little screw right here. You can tighten that up and that won't allow that caliper to change. So we got that set. 2.095. And all you gotta do is take your cases one at a time. Um, what is that thing? It's not an expensive one. I had a, a Mitoyo that get destroyed in the fire. I had a lot of Mitoyo tools, calipers and, and stuff like that, but I lost those. These are uh, a Tektron. Uh, you can get, you can pick those up at some of the uh, online stores and stuff. I don't know if they've got a thing here that uh, tells you or not. It's made in China, but I've not had any trouble with it. I mean, it's been right on the money, and it's held uh, the uh, the settings. No, they don't have a they don't have an email here. So. Michigan Industrial Tools in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I've used that. A lot of the stuff I had elsewhere stored a storage unit when that fire happened. So this is how I ended up salvaging some of it. All right, take these cases, like I said, they're new, made this into a no go go, uh, no. No go, go gauge is what you basically did. You're welcome. Uh, see that one there is not going to go. So that one's going to be trimmed. So we set that one off to the side here. And I think there's a, I think there's a hundred pieces in that bag. Let me know if that boiler overruns my audio, folks. That almost goes. We're going to have to trim that one. That one there is going to be trimmed. And I'll go through that whole bag. And I'll trim every one of them if it needs it. Now, I had some 460 uh, Smith & Wesson. Oh, good. <laughs> that makes an interesting background sign. Okay. <laughs> as long as it's not, not, over, not overpowering my audio, that's, that's that was what I was worried about. I had some 460 down here. New stuff. New brass. And uh, run it all across the calipers, set for no go go gauge, and it, it was about 25% of the stuff I had to trim. And that was new Starlight brass too. I got some more of that stuff. I got one more bag of that stuff that I've got. To, I've got to process. I'm not running the tumbler right now because that thing is that thing's crazy loud, <laughs> and it echoes off of this bench bed. <laughs> Good, good, good. I'll set them all up. That row. I'll set them up ten in a row. They're all indicating right now they've all got to be trimmed. So far, I haven't run across any of them. That one is a squeaky, but it's going to get trimmed anyway. The reason why I trim every single one of them is if you use uh that was yeah i had a blast on that that was a blast last night i, I stayed up later last night than i have in a long time miss kitty <laughs> i'm usually in bed about eight o'clock but uh i i tried my dangest to get into that thing and i finally got it <laughs> signal wasn't all that good it kept breaking up pretty bad but i had fun I always enjoy the chats anyway. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yep. Have a lot of fun.
Good folks. Good folks. I always enjoy meeting new people and, and making friends, especially in the Second Amendment community. I'm a lifetime NRA member, and those people just haven't haven't impressed me lately. And uh, <laughs> I was uh, kind of after one of them the day before yesterday, and I was talking to him, and I told him straight up, I said, look, guys, we're losing face here. You guys are going to get off your backside and start showing uh, these other these other organizations that we're still there, and we can still make a difference. But we got to do what we got to do. You know, we just can't can't sit back and and let the government run all over us like they are. And I am really really concerned about after the first of the year. And could, oh God, I'm sorry, Vanessa. You know. <laughs> That's not good. And, and the thing was, I had a lot of doubts about Sandy Hook. And I still got a lot of doubts about Sandy Hook. Because, you know, you hear the, you hear all the scuttlebutt, you hear all the people talking, you know, that it was a conspiracy theory and all this other stuff it was a put on. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got a Democrat lady governor up here now this state had an excellent governor um right up until this last election and he had to go out because he'd done his he'd done his two terms a shame too because he was fantastic oh boy yeah floyd <laughs> i'm with you brother <laughs> i've been in that state many many times driving truck and I keep telling whoever I'm driving, whoever I'm driving for, <laughs> I didn't lose anything in New York City or California, and I'm bound not to go back and try to find it. So, and I, I've had a few discussions with uh, DOT officers in that state too. You know, I got a law enforcement background myself. I've got. Uh, a little experience here with the DOT officers. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I've challenged them. You, you just couldn't let them walk all over you, you know, because they do. A lot of these guys out here I feel bad for them because they don't keep up with the DOT laws and regulations. And they end up getting themselves some monstrous fines because they don't have stuff right on those trucks. And I always tried to pride myself in, in doing, doing it, yeah. OTR, yeah. OTR, ex-owner operator. <laughs> yeah, lots of gray hair. And I'm only 62. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's just so angry and I want to get out of it so bad and just stay home, retire, and relax. But uh, I just don't have the money to do it right now. I'm just living by the grace of God, and uh, I leave everything right in his hands every morning, and I get up out of that bed. Oh well, enough of that, but I don't know, I, I've got mixed feelings, I've got a lot of mixed feelings about what's going to happen, and if we let this stuff slide, or if we continue with the complacency that we've shown in the past, people get complacent, they get comfortable, they get let them do, let them do whatever they want to do, or they're so busy in their lives that they just haven't got time to, to keep track of everything. Then you know that's that's where we lose. It. That's where we lose it. And we can't let these organizations slack either. And I'll be the first to tell you, I'm right on that phone when I hear something that ain't right. And uh, I used to be on Sirius XM, Sirius XM radio. And I still have it, but I'm not subscribed anymore right now, so I can't pay for it. But uh, uh, Channel 125, Patriots Channel, Sirius XM radio. And we got a lot of good... Uh, hosts on there. I've been on there with many of them, talked with many of them. One of them happens to be a very good friend of mine. 
and uh, on air and off air, he and I talked about a whole lot of things, and uh, he helped me through some through some really difficult times in my life off air, and uh, he's, uh, he's been a good friend of Sam. So anytime I have a chance to talk with him, then I'll do it. I've got his number. I got to give him a call and let him know what's going on. I haven't talked with him for a while. Basically, that I'm back to the check in here. I got 40 of them checked, and they're all failed. <laughs> they all got to be, they've all got to be per, uh, trimmed, and then I'll go from trimming to I'll expand the case mouth. Of course, you know, 450 Marlin is a or 4570 is like the 450 Marlin. That is a straight wall case. So that uh, has to be flared. They all actually should be flared anyway, a little bit prevents uh, uh, prevents uh, damage in the bullet when you see it. Uh, that's good, Kitty. Yeah, maybe you heard me on there. More than likely, I used to be on. Uh, I think it's channel one forty-five there with the trucking outfits too. And I don't know, they, they turned so liberal that, that I, I just couldn't handle it anymore. I got out of there. So the only channel that I really used on talk radio was uh, channel 125, Patriot. I had, you know, like I said, I had a lot of good friends on there. Still got a lot of good friends on there. And uh, get right on then and mix it up with the big boys. Tell them just how I felt. And uh, pretty much how I felt was the way a lot of people, a lot of people feel. A lot of those things have got to be trimmed. So, keep checking them. When I get after this trimmer and set it, finish setting it up, I want to show you folks how to do that too. That's there's a little bit to it. Once you get it set up and. It's uh, it's a lot easier to get things done. If you guys want to let some of the other guys know that I'm on live, if they don't know it already, then feel free and uh, let them know. You know, I'm really impressed with the way that everything is going with this channel. I really am. I, I really was shocked at a day when I looked at it and I saw the uh, the numbers already in just 36 after I had really started I've all already got almost 30 subs so you know it, it really makes me feel good and it makes me makes me want to do all this stuff for, for you folks and maybe you'll pick up a few things maybe not you know or maybe you just enjoy the channel but I love reloading I've been doing it since 1970. Uh, lost my car through a crash. I'm sorry to hear that, Vanessa. I hope you was all right afterwards. But, uh, uh, I like to teach combat national championships. I had, I had an excellent mentor that taught me how to shoot handgun, shoot competitively. And uh, that's good. Yep, good. Thank you. Math teacher, huh? <laughs> you know, that was something I was never really good at, was math. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit it. I never really, never really got the hang of algebra. I had it explained to me many times, but I just never got, never got the hang of it. And it would frustrate me, and I, I, I'd leave it alone. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with it no more for a while. And my algebra teacher hated me because, boy, I'll tell you, he and I, uh, he and I had a few words, shall we say. But he was all right, I guess. I had a lot of good teachers in school. Anyway, I enjoyed it. Graduated in 1976 from a school that was built on 
my family, my family's property, it was sold many, many years ago, and it started out as a 750 acre plot. And eventually it passed through a couple, three owners after my great, great grandparents passed away. And uh, town decided they'd take it for taxes, put up a school up there. Well, I graduated from that, and my godson graduated from it. And we just had a had the last reunion that's going to be in that building here this year, this last year. This no, this year, because they they're tearing it down. They're putting a, a new school up across the way. I don't know how in the blazes of people in that town are going to be able to pay for that monster. But I guess I, that district is growing quite a lot. Get down towards the end of the bag here, finally. Get a few more to do. That's all I do. I got new brass. I got fired brass. The first step, it goes through that resizer. I'll resize every one of them that go through the tumbler. And it gets them all nice and clean. It also takes a lot of the fine machining marks that might appear on the brass uh, after resizing. It makes them look better. They're more clean. And it just makes them look better. And when I load ammunition, when I get that stuff done, it looks very close to that. It looks almost brand new. So it's good looking stuff. I had a lot of help in the reloading uh, field myself. Even had a chat or two with Mr. Herman Kane. I didn't know it. he was a Navy ballistician. And we had a few, had him on Sirius XM on one of the shows there one day for a few minutes. And then, uh, I learned a few things from him because I have a lot of done a lot of reading and stuff through the load manuals and stuff. I lost all my most all my library in that mess. Yeah. I'm slowly gaining back a few here and there. I have got but I got most of the newest ones. Lyman and both of their books, uh, Cast Bullet Handbook, which is a separate one from the the black-faced one there that I showed you a few minutes ago. That one there covers all, all calibers. TC, Encore, Contender, pistols, and rifles. I think it's even got some shotgun in there. But there's a blue-covered one that's called the Cast Bullet Handgun. Hand, handbook. Cast Bullet Handbook. And uh, that's all it is. It's dedicated by Lyman. And it's dedicated for loading cast bullets and pistols. Uh, I don't shoot any cast in rifle. A lot of the guys do. Uh, PC Empire, he does. Uh, Ozark does. But I've just never been a fan of using straight lead or blend lead, either one, in a rifle. Because if you look at the, uh, you look at the velocities, and they're considerably lower than uh, your jacketed rounds for rifle. So I, I stick with just the, just the jacketed stuff in the rifles. And, uh, the uh, cast stuff in the pistols. Now I, I do have a few of these and I'm gonna test. The 4570, I've got some cast bullets and I'm gonna try some of those. If I get a lot of leading in that barrel, though, then those bullets would be used only on the pistol barrel. Reloading 357 and 44, hopefully, next year. I shot a lot of 44 and 357. Hey, Uncle Jim. You with me? Hopefully, uh, Hopefully my audio is good. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised about the, the remarks about the audio here, but I'm not. I'm really not because this is this is the uh, ceiling or the floor on the, the level uh, 
of the house there. That's what you see in the top of the frame here. And I am downstairs and it's pretty much open down here. Eventually I'm going to get my wood shop equipment up here. That's going to be down on that angle and uh, be able to get back to my wood shop woodworking. I do like that. I enjoy that too. Too much eggnog. <laughs> yeah, I I am an alcohol alcoholic. And I haven't touched that stuff for over 20 years. And I don't miss it. I don't miss smoking. I don't miss drinking. And I get high off life. And I have a lot of fun. I'll go out and I'll mix it up with some of the guys. And uh, we'll have we'll have a good time. But no, I I don't have any interest in drinking anymore. That's why I didn't drink any last night, Uncle Jim. You know, I might have some just straight eggnog, but I don't I don't drink any uh, alcoholic stuff. I've always told people that's asked me about that. <laughs> I can get into enough trouble. I don't need any help from drugs or alcohol. No, I don't mess with that stuff. Not anymore. Just about done here. Jim, I've been telling, uh, good for you. Good for you. These are 4570s. They're brand new. Brand new uh, Starline. And uh, I've got to, yeah, so am I. Type 2. Ha, ha, ha. Fun. But, uh, I just got some brass here that I uh, just run through the 450 Marlin. That's a beast. That's a that's this on steroids. And 450 has got the belted, something like a belted Magnum case. And that's the only case that Hornady or anybody else has designed with that wide of a belt so that we couldn't use anything else. It has to be Hornady brass because that belt is different. Oh well, that's right. That's a lot of fun to shoot. She's she's a hard kicker. That thing will put down just about anything on this continent. I usually shoot a 300 or a 350 grain bullet. And Jim, what I was doing earlier, set my calipers according to the trim length loading manuals. And this one here on the 4570s happens to be 2.09, oh, 2.095. So we set it at 2.095 and use this as a, as a go, no go gauge. And if I've got to trim them, I'll send them off to the side. If they're good, I'll send them in a, in a different section. But those are all checked. It's all brand new Starline. So I'm all done with this function. Now, I still got to have that. What am I doing here? Two. Oh, nine, five, right there. Lock that down again. Because I got to have it when I get this thing going. And Jim, this is what I've got. I got the Trim Pro RCBS. It's uh, a powered unit. And the one that I had before the fire was not powered. I had to, I had to make up a power system for that. I matched the screw that went into the little handle. Well, it's actually on this end of it here where the motor is. And I uh, took that handle off, matched up the screw, and stuck that screw in a, in a drill shock and tightened it up and used that for power on my trimmer. And I lost that, unfortunately. Okay, now I've got a 45 caliber pilot. And this, little, this little guy here. Whoops, wrong way. Hopefully you can see that, 45 caliber. And what that does is that slides into the end of that cutter. Slides in, it's got a set screw, you lock it in. And I've had to lock those in pretty solid. Sometimes them things will come out of there. So you gotta have them in there pretty snug. So that part of it's set. Now, that's set at 2.095. Now, just the basic. See how that's tipped? That tells me that motor's going to be slid back. So, we'll just three thumb screws on that. Loosen them up. 
slide that back a little ways. And that case will set right down in there. Make sure that plate's on there in place. And I'll leave. Oops. I'll leave about that much of a gap when I'm setting up. Right between that cutter and the end of that case. That way, when that when I, it's this unit has got a handle on it and you push back and pull down on that handle and slide it forward then it starts the motor and uh oops wrong one starts that turning that's about three eighths of an inch and what i'm doing then now is setting this collar. This is the fine. This is the course adjustments on that shaft. You loosen the course, you can slide the whole thing without loosening. So I set it approximately three eighths of an inch compared to the distance that I've got from the gap of the from the from the end of the case to the cutter, which is approximately three eighths of an inch. So I've got about three eighths of an inch here. That's going to be close, and I'll let that go in there slowly and uh, I'll set that up see how we're doing here whoops there goes my volume on that all right now I can get my fat fingers out of the way boy this is going to be there we go all right now you can, now you can see where that pilot goes in there. now I've got to set that thumb screw there's three of them. Over. Okay, so not cutting it yet. So I've got to loosen this just a little bit and move it this way. And then I gotta move the uh the uh, smaller or the larger collar uh very slowly until I get to 2.095 with that caliper. That sets my length. So let's set that just a minute. I need both hands on that one. I've only got about an eighth of an inch. And that should be pretty close right there. It should be pretty close. Well, guess what I did? <laughs> I went the wrong way. I'm going to push that whole collar system towards the motor when you're, when you're shortening these up. Okay, so that's going to be closed, but I got, a, I got a small gap right there between my main collar and that trimmer itself. So what I'll do is I'll stop that and move that forward just a little bit. I like to have my fine collar set now about halfway. That way I've got plenty of adjustment on the other end. Either way. Okay. Now we are close right there. That's touching that case. So what I'll do is I'll take that case. Doesn't look like it did touch it though. It'll get really really shiny on the end of that case if it if it starts cutting it so we didn't start cutting that yet but we're close i like to take a little piece of paper too and put that right there by that cutter just like that 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 dish catches my catches my cuttings pretty much most of them anyway and those cuttings if you're into recycling, that stuff can that stuff can be turned in for recycle. I want to make a note on this on this uh, collar too. Knocking stuff around. All right. Now, if you look at this shaft, I, I got it right here. I use that reflection in the light for a gauge. Now I'm not loosening this one. 
okay? I'm not loosening this one. But this one, each tick mark on that dial is a thousandth of an inch. So if I want to shorten that, I want to shorten that three, three thousandths of an inch. There's one, two, and three. And I retighten it. Moving it towards you like that moves the cutter in. If I push that dial, loosen it and push that dial the other way, the opposite way of the way this turns, then it pushes it out. So if I'm too, if I'm cutting too much off, then I'll push it away from me. That shortens it up. But if you pull it towards you, then it pulls the cutter in closer, thus cutting your case. So let's see what that does. All right, let's set in. Look like that. That's cutting right there, not much. We keep going just a little bit. See, we got okay. Now you can see, uh, go the right way in that camera. Now you can see that shiny end. That's just starting to cut. Put it back in there. I'll turn my system until I get that set screw up, line it up. With that tick mark on that sun on that light on that shaft i want to come back in we'll go back in two more there's two more tick marks that way turning it towards me i'm pulling it towards me that's going to shorten that up now let's see here That, that just took probably about two thousandths of an inch off of that case. Now I've got a the, uh, tool that I use. I found this online. And this has got positions for four tools. And it's on a roller. And this is the slickest little bugger that I've ever seen. It's got your small uh, primer box scraper. Your big one, your outside deburring tool, and your inside deburring tool. So you can have all four of those tools on this tool head, and it's it's uh, bearing. So you can uh, so you can turn that thing pretty easy. Now, Jim, I've got one one caliber that's uh, called a. 357 Herod. I've also got the 30 Herod. I don't know if you've ever heard of that or not. But both of those cases are made off of 3030 cases. And I have to use this trimmer to cut a lot of brass off the length of those cases. They have to be run through the dies, run through the tumbler, and then they come to trim after I get to the trim point then it's cutting off a pretty good amount of that brass. And that's where all this brass came from. It's in this bowl. Because <laughs> I just did a, a bunch of uh, 357 Herrits here a while back. Uh, let's see what I'll put it back in there and just give it a good quick dress cut. So I'm actually hitting that twice with that case. And it makes that nice and square. A lot of the cases, a lot of the bullets, the F right on the money. That is right on the money. That just squeaks through there. So that case is done. Right there. Now the most I might do, which I may right now, that's pretty close. But I'm going to take another half a thousandth off of that just for the just for the sake of doing. So again, loosen that set screw, turn it towards where that tick mark lines up for that, that light reflection on that shaft. Now it's not gonna cut much. Yeah, Forster I haven't used. I haven't used, uh, I don't think I've used any of their equipment. Most of them, all the stuff that I've had is either Lyman Lee or RCBS. Now before the fire I had 
<laughs> my dies, 90% of them out of 60 different calibers I was loading at the time. I had probably two or three sets of uh, uh, leaves. I had one set of Lyman's for the uh, 7.62 by 54 Mars and the gun. And I had uh, one set of red Redding Customs for my 358 Norma Magnum. That's a bolt action. It's a BRNO uh, uh, 98 that has been rebarreled and rechambered in 358 Norma. That thing is a bear killer. And it takes a, that'll take a moose easily with uh, with that caliber. So 358, it's uh, uh, caliber that's pretty big, and I just got that. That that is a custom build. All right, this case here should be. Let's see what the calipers say now. Yeah, nice easy slide through. That's right on the money. So that case is done. So just do that. The rest of them. And now, now it now becomes easy because you've got the machine set up. You know what's, what's going to be done in, in process from one to the other. So it's now it's just trimming, deburring, and I'll check them with the, uh, the caliper every now and again to make sure that, that they're right. Yes, it will. A 250 grain bullet at almost 3,000 feet per second. Yeah, that will take a moose. I've got a few. I've got a few rifles. I wanted one custom, one custom built rifle in my life, and I've got a gunsmith up here in Maine that is world renowned. Man is very good at what he does. Goodbye, Bullwinkle, you betcha. <laughs> one shot, drop them right there where they stand. My brother got one. He's he's the only lucky one out of the, out of the family. My uh, mother-in-law, in uh, quite a few years, she, she passed away here a few years ago. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Yes, I, I want to pull my first tag. I've never pulled one up here, Kitty. But... Um, that, uh, that's a lot of fun. And uh, my brother took his with a 30 odd six. You better believe it. It's just like a, like a beef critter. Don't send them again. They're a big animal. You get a big bull. I got one out here. I haven't seen him. Oh, gosh. That thing's touchy. Just touch that thing. <laughs> and, uh, I look. I looked at the tracks here this morning. He's big and probably dress probably around seven, eight hundred pounds. All easy. Nice and clean cut. That's the way they ought to look. Sometimes they'll cut all the way around. Sometimes they won't. Fired brass. I found it. It, it doesn't always cut all the way around, but it's close. It evens it out. Square. Yep. Yep, I'm not surprised at all. I'll tell you. They are a big animal. I think the biggest one up here that I know of so far that has been taken had a 72-inch spread across his rack. And he dressed out almost 1,500 pounds. You won't have a big freezer when it comes to big something that big. Otherwise, you're not going to get it in there. That's all there is to that. Now they're all consistent. They're all going to be the same. And the reason why you trim, for the most part, is if you've got a crimped or a cantaloured bullet that's got a specific groove on it to crimp them on, that's where you want these exactly the same length so that that uh, rolls that crimp 
or the end of this case right into that groove and holds it. A lot of your big pistol calibers, you've got to do that. Prevents, uh, prevents uh, walkout. Same way with the ARs. I mean, if you have an AR, I've got three of them. And you've got a cantaloid bullet that you're using on that or a lead cast bullet on that. And you have them things all the same the same length, you're not gonna have any way any half the problems of feeding, because they're all gonna be the same length. And uh yeah, two and a half ton of meat, yes indeed. <laughs> two inches shy of the world record. Wow. Yeah. But it uh it prevents a lot of the problems of walk ahead, bullet walk ahead on those on those rounds in an AR. AR magazine or any magazine for that matter. Once you lock those bullets into that case, it's not going anywhere. You know, it can recoil all at once and it's not going to walk ahead on you. And not all the bullets have a, a can lure or a uh, 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 specific groove on it if it's a cast bullet. I usually go right through these pretty fast. Galena Air Force. Oh yeah. yeah. That's that's one place my dad wanted to go and go see is Alaska. I I I'd probably go up and and see it during the during the warmer part of the year. <laughs> those temperatures up there, even even with me being in Maine here, those temperatures up there are way below. Yeah, yeah, it does. And that's the first one I've had, Jim. Yeah, I'd like to go up, Kitty. I really would. Yeah, I bought that second hand in a gun shop. Just the way it is, without the shell holders and the and the pilots. I paid $175, yeah, way south of 30 below, yeah. <laughs> you better believe it. Dress like Nanook when you go up to Alaska. <laughs> All right, black diamond guns again, guns again, okay. I've heard, now this is probably just hearsay, but I've heard if you go up, Further, of course, up into the North Pole, there was some guys up there that took a hammer and a, and a one inch piece of plate steel and got down to like 80 or 90 below zero outside. And they took and smacked that piece of plate steel with a hammer and it shattered just like glass. And I said, that's too cold. No, thank you. Savings all over this table. I'll have to take a brush and uh, sweep it off after I get done trimming. Once you get done with these on trim, they go back on the other side of the bench here, back to the rock chucker, and I'll run them through and expand the case mouth a little bit. And they'll come back over here and Go through prime, and I'll prime them all. They'll be all ready. You know, when I get ready to load up a particular load, and I made one up that that shoots well in in the rifle and uh, the pistol, then I'll just keep loading that same recipe. Stay right with that same recipe. <laughs> Hundred and nine below zero, my God. Phew. Whoa, that is no, no thanks. <laughs> I'll stay mean. <laughs> I'll go up during the, the uh, during the summertime. As they say, it's pretty nice up there. And I used to watch that ice road truckers show all the time. The guys went up there driving the trucks. 
No. <laughs> no, I'll pass. Three, six, eight, two more for that row makes ten. That one took a lot. That took a pretty healthy cut off of that one. Burn is intense for down. Burn is trying to get any. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. You had to have heat, period. You did not stay outside very long at all, that kind of pressure, that kind of temperature. Oh, Jim, you mentioned about the price on that. This unit, if you buy it now, new, I think it'd run you three to 350. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's one thing you, def you definitely don't want to do up that area then, shut the shut a diesel down. You ain't gonna you ain't never gonna get started again. <laughs> yeah. That's not too bad. We'll go right along here. Now some of these, if some of these didn't need to be trimmed, that would cut the time down on this. See what's already stay running. Oh yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and I always check them to see if see if I left a burr on there too. You gotta watch what you're doing with them burrs too, because they're sharp. I've been cut a few times with them things. Yeah, well, now I gotta hit that on the outside again. Didn't get it quite deeper. Oh. Yeah. Alright, here. Nine, ten. Alright, that's eleven. I like rows of ten. Sun over again. Get in there. Get in there. Still got quite a few of them to trim.
that one was long. <laughs> that one was long. I removed quite a bit of material off of that one. That's what that does on it. It gets them all the same length. Ever since I was shooting competition, I had a lot of 45 ACP rounds that had to be run through the full process. I was shooting competition, so everything had to be right up to snuff. And everything had to match up. You'll have to let me know, uh, Jim, how you make out with a uh, 300 blackout and those cast bullets. Hope I'm not boring people here. <laughs> Yeah, I've been casting since 19, 1983. 
I had a lot of molds. I've got a few now that I've recouped, but I, uh, I gotta get some more wheel weights before I can start uh, casting again. That's how I quit smoking, as a matter of fact. I got about, oh, 100 and, 120, 130 pounds of lead. At first, it had to be cleaned. And after it was cleaned, then I had to put my recipe together for how much of one type and how much of another type to put together, come up with the right uh, combination. And uh, once I got that done, I'd re remelt it, run it right back through again as a blend, and uh, have that all ready. Two pots. I had one that's ten pounder, which I which I have now. I had to, I got that one replaced, and uh, that's a ten pounder. That's one that I use to take uh, raw wheel weights and and other types of raw lead that's going to be melted down and put into ingots, cleaned up. I do that all outside because, boy, that stuff will stink up a house. But uh, I'll render that down and uh, clean it up, cast it into the uh, lee, one pound ingots, and I'll set that aside and mark it. And in the same way with wheel weights. And when I get ready to cast my bullets, I got the 20 pounder. I'll do that inside. I don't have to worry about the about the stuff stinking up the the house because it doesn't smell, and I get very very little dross, very little waste um, off of that stuff. And uh, that uh, that works really well. I've got a nice a nice blend that I use that I've used a lot of years. And it works well. I've never used battery lead, and a lot of guys have because of that fact. And it's it's more difficult to, to work with that stuff. So pretty much I'll stay with uh, two uh, blend, or I'll uh, put my own together. But some of those handgun cartridges I've got, like at 460 to 500, both of them things take a stronger bullet. In other words, it takes more uh, PSI level on that bullet. And most of them are just plain base and not uh, gas checked. So I use a harder bullet. And usually I'll have that Brunel level at about 20 to 22, which is a really hard bullet. And uh, it stands up to that kind of pressure a whole lot better than a softer Brunel number would be like 16 or 18. You have 16, 15 Brunel, you get that virgin lead mixed with just a little bit of wheel weight. That's pretty much what the uh, uh, cowboy action shooters use because they got to have that, when that bullet hits that plate, it's it's got to go, it's got to splatter and uh, they don't want that stuff ricocheting and those harder bullets will ricochet.
Good. That's good, Vanessa. Yep. And it's best to have it well ventilated if you can do that. Ammo permit. Sorry, I got my care permit. Move back here. Yeah. You got to have an ammo permit? Oh, come on. That's ridiculous. Gee. How far are they going to stick their noses up our backsides? I mean, really. An animal permit. I think there was one other state that I went, went into. I think it was Illinois. One time I stopped. I was going to pick up a little bit of ammo at one of the Walmarts. And they asked me for a, a permit. And I looked at the lady and I said, permit? What for? Well, you got to have a permit to buy ammunition here in the state. I said, no, thank you. Have a nice day. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I would say something, but I'm going to keep it nice. <laughs> So do you have a, a concealed carry permit now, Kitty? another it's just another way of control kitty that's all just another way of control now maine is a is a constitutional carry state i don't know how long it's going to stay that way with this new governor coming in she's democrat and she is definitely anti-gun so i don't know what that's going to take you know what's going to take place there as far as that goes but uh, I don't know, we're just going to have to keep after it. The uh, prior governor that, that uh, is leaving in January, he was very Second Amendment friendly. As a matter of fact, he was instrumental in getting constitutional carry in the state of Maine. But uh, I've, got, I've got mine. I got mine because I tried. And that's, that's part of it. You know, then I got the card on the back. It's in the back. That's our permit. I don't want to show it too long, but I had I had one from the state of Georgia down there years ago. That that expired back in 2012, and it's it's good for five years. Mandatory background check every time. You know. And you've got to have a clean record. That's all there is to it. But that's just something if, if 
I get stopped. That's the first thing that I'll present. Then I'll give him the card and let him know. I thought I was going to get myself in trouble down in Texas one time. But uh, I showed him that. No problem. He said, you've got a concealed carry permit. Have a nice day. Yes, we had reciprocity with Texas, too, at the time. And uh, we don't have it. I don't know why Texas dropped us, but we'll honor theirs. But they don't honor ours, and that's the way it is. Yeah. Oh, God. Every one of them, good grief. Yeah, when you set up your shop, you know, you gotta, you got to think of the process as it goes through. You know, reloading, uh, resizing, decapping. Then you come to prime. Then you come to trim here. This end of the bench, I've got a Hornady case neck trimmer. That's brand new. I haven't even used it yet. I haven't even got it set up. Good grief. Public and private sales. Uh, good grief. But uh, that's, it's just like working in the kitchen. You know, you gotta you gotta think of the process, take your bench, build it, how big you're gonna have it. I, I want one more section of the table, which I've got some plywood over there I'm standing up against the wall. That's gonna be for my library. These toting up down on these stairs all the time with these brooks getting ridiculous. So that is not only gonna be a bench for my books, it's also gonna be a workbench when I do some gunsmithing, which I do occasionally. And uh, I'll work on ARs and bolt actions and revolvers. I, I've done a lot of trigger jobs, custom trigger jobs, and on a lot of my own stuff and small stuff I can do. But uh, without having, you know, the big equipment, I can't do, I can't do the, the uh, full function. My friend's place up there that I was telling to mention there before that built that bolt action, 358, um, he's got a full shop and he can do everything. But where we go? Yep. <laughs> yep, I love my ward working too, just as much as I love my reloading. That was my escape. I forgot I had a truck driving license and I got out there in the wood shop and I just just fired it around. I built a few projects once in a while. And uh, long, long ago, when wife and I were married, we thought we might have a child. And I had built a crib for a baby by hand. And it was all from an old pattern. And, right, you know, that's the beauty of that stuff. But I, I had all the, I have all the equipment except for a planer and, uh, oh yeah, 200 square foot, oh, part, definitely. Yeah, 16 by 12. That was the last one that I built, Kenny. That was a 16 by 12 and it had a small overhead uh, storage area where I kept uh, lumber and uh, other stuff in the house that we didn't need storage area for overhead. And when I built it, I thought, you know, I'm going to go one step further and I'm going to put in an 8x4 door on each end of it. And I'm going to make that thing so I can drive my, motor my motorcycle out. That worked out pretty well. By the way, I do have a bike. It's over there. I'll show it to you sometime here. Woodley. Turn on. Yes, sir. Uh, that was a that was a craftsman there. He really loved his kits. He wanted to he wanted to take y'all and if he showed an interest in and in, uh, in, uh, teach you woodworking. I can do just about anything I want to with a piece of wood. I can't make a gun stock. <laughs> I can't make a gun stock because I don't have the equipment. Yeah, but I leave that I leave that to my buddy up uh, up in uh, St. Albans there where he lives. He is a craftsman. That man knows what he's doing.
he is known very well worldwide. That's how far his reputation has gotten. And that rifle he built for me is beautiful. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I hope I'm not boring you there, Jim. Uh, I don't know. You're probably out there. When when you uh, start to... Uh, um, yes, there are. Uh, when you start doing that uh, 300 blackout, I'd like to know how you make out with those cast bullets. And I was mentioning earlier, I don't know if you caught it or not, that cantalore on that bullet. And, uh, okay. All right. Yep. Good deal. Uh, that cantalore has got uh, the case of that mouth. is uh, mouth of the case has got to uh, uh, lock into that bullet right so it don't walk on you. In other words, slide out or, or get driven in on recoil on that rifle. I know that 300 ain't got much recoil. <laughs> hey, I had two years ago. I had two years ago, Floyd. That was pretty much the first thing that I did when I woke up. I, I get myself squared away enough so I could get done when I had to get done. And I'd have me a shot of whiskey. Straighten me right out. Otherwise, it was rah. <laughs> Someone else just joined the chat here. I got four on now. I don't know who joined. Oops, there's only one. I'm going back down to three, I guess. That's all right. <laughs> Lots of water. Ay, ay, ay. That stuff always made me worse off. <laughs> If I started with beer, it had to finish with beer. Well, the same way with the hard stuff. If I started with hard stuff, I had to finish with hard stuff. If I mixed them, I was in trouble. <laughs> yeah, they came in and went right back out. I don't know why. Hello. All right. Pretty true. Supposed to be cold up here the next few mornings. It's supposed to be down around low teens and in the mid uh, mid to high twenties during the day. So I guess that little heat wave is going. It's got up fifty one degrees up here though lost most of that snow that we had. We had pretty close two feet around the house here. And I haven't got but probably six or eight inches now. I know you've got more than that, Jim. <laughs> That's a beautiful area where you're at, though. Man, that is pretty. You got the muleys running around. Twenty, yeah, sixty-two. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. Type two diabetic. Yeah, me too. I'm drinking water. The world is better to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My uh, my cousin. I call him my brother. He's uh, he's a type two, but he's on insulin. Yes, it is absolutely. We're not going to get any snow, but it's going to be chilly. Yeah. I think we've got a hundred in this this lot here. Pretty close to a hundred cases. It's not. <laughs> Do you need more snow up there, Jim? Warm 
formed up. Uh huh. Lots of rain since then. Yeah. And we got a lot of rain up here in the last couple of days. Like I said, it took most of the snow off that we had. And I'm right up about central, just a little bit north central of the state. I used to live down around Bangor. I stayed with uh, my brother.